Hi all, in this video we are going to see about the second messenger mechanisms for hormonal action. So we know that second messenger systems are a very important question from an exam point of view. So we will see what these second messengers are. So second messengers basically they are intracellular signal molecules that are formed by a series of enzymatic reaction subsequent to the formation of hormone receptor complex. So basically when a hormone receptor complex is formed, it will lead to a series of enzymatic reaction of which the in these intracellular signal molecules are called second messengers. So examples of second messengers are cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP, IP3 that is inositol triphosphate, diacylglycerol and calcium. So some important second messenger systems that are present are adenyl cyclase CAMP system, guanyl cyclase cyclic GMP system, cell membrane phospholipid system and calcium calmodulin system. So now we are going to uh, see about each of these second messenger systems. Okay. So we know that these second messengers are usually involved with G protein coupled receptors. So, when a G protein coupled receptor is activated by binding of the hormone to the receptor, it is called hormone receptor complex. So, when that happens, the G proteins are activated and once the G proteins are activated, the alpha subunit will dissociate and it will attach to an enzyme. So, in adenyl cyclase CMP system, this enzyme is the adenyl cyclase. So, adenyl cyclase is activated and this causes conversion of ATP to CAMP or cyclic AMP. So, this CAMP will cause activation of CAMP dependent protein kinases. And what do protein kinases do? They will phosphorylate the proteins. Okay, and this in turn will cause cellular response. See, basically for cellular response, we need phosphorylation of proteins. Phosphorylation of proteins basically activates them. So, for, for phosphorylation, we need protein kinases. And this is done by CAMP here. CAMP will activate the CAMP dependent protein kinases which will cause phosphorylation of proteins and thereby cause cellular response. Okay, now how is this action terminated? The CAMP will be acted upon by an enzyme called phosphodiesterase and this will convert CAMP back to 5-AMP and that is how this action can be terminated. So this is the adenyl cyclase CAMP system wherein the adenyl cyclase is the enzyme activated and CAMP is the second messenger, right? So when a hormone binds to the G protein coupled receptor, it, uh, the GS protein is activated that is GTP is converted to GTP so the alpha subunit will be dissociated and will activate an enzyme called adenyl cyclase. This adenyl cyclase will cause conversion of ATP to CAMP. CAMP will activate the protein kinase A and which in turn will phosphorylate target proteins. These target proteins will produce cellular response and thus there will be sig and the signal termination occurs when CAMP is degraded by phosphodiesterase. So this is the adenyl cyclase CAMP system in a flowchart manner. So what are the different hormones that act via CAMP? The antidiuretic hormone, the corticotropin releasing hormone, the growth hormone releasing hormone, the gonadotropin releasing hormone then the follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, all these act via CAMP. Okay, so this is the adenyl cyclase CAMP system. So next we will see the guanyl cyclase CGMP system. Now this is very similar to that of uh, uh, the adenyl cyclase CAMP system. In this, once the GPCR or the hormone binds to the receptor, the GPCR is activated. So, the alpha subunit will be dissociated and will bind on to an enzyme called guanyl cyclase. Here, the ATP will be converted to CGMP. Instead of CAMP, here we have got CGMP. This will cause activation of CGMP dependent protein kinases. Again, there will be phosphorylation of proteins and thereby cellular response. So, as you can see, it is much similar to the CGMP system except that the enzyme and the second messenger is different. Now, uh, the CGMP can also cause opening of ion channels and thereby cause cellular response. This is especially important in case of visual uh, transduction. 
Now, how is CGMP terminated? Here also, we've got phosphodiesterase, which will convert it back to 5-GMP. Okay, so now we'll see this in a flowchart manner. So, when a hormone binds onto the receptor on the cell membrane, it will cause activation of the G-protein coupled receptor, which in turn will cause activation of the guanylyl cyclase. The guanylyl cyclase will convert GTP to CGMP. And this CGMP will activate CGMP dependent kinases and phosphatases. It can also directly open specific ion channels and thereby it has a role to play in phototransduction in rods and cones. So now we'll see the different hormones that act through CGMP. So we've got the atrial natriuretic peptide or ANP. Nitric oxide is an important mediator of vasodilation that acts via the CGMP system. Then we've got a gastrointestinal polypeptide called guanolin, which acts via CGMP system. Estrichia coli entotoxin. Now this is actually an applied aspect because this entotoxin that is produced by Estrichia coli, they act via CGMP and it can cause diarrhea. So these are the different hormones and ligands that act through CGMP system. So next we'll see about the cell membrane phospholipid system. So here in this, once a hormone binds onto the receptor, it will cause activation of the G proteins. See here specifically to the GQ proteins that will be activated. So when these G proteins are activated, the alpha subunit will dissociate and it will cause activation of an enzyme which is called phospholipase C. So when this phospholipase C is activated, it will cause cleavage of another phospholipid, a cell membrane phospholipid called phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate. So thus, this PIP2 or phosphatidyl inositol diphosphate will be split to form DAG that is diacylglycerol and IP3 that means inositol triphosphate. And now it is to these two second messengers that is IP3 and DAG that the further actions occur. So DAG or diacylglycerol will cause the cause conversion of inactive protein kinase C to active protein kinase C. And remember, protein kinases always cause phosphorylation of proteins. And this in turn will cause cellular response. So that is how DAG would work. It will activate the protein kinase C. What about IP3? IP3 will act on receptors that are present on the endoplasmic reticulum. And it will cause release of calcium. And it is via calcium that further cellular response take place. So thus... The, we've seen how IP3 and DAG would work as second messengers. This DAG also has got another effect wherein it will cause formation of arachidonic acid from these phospholipids. So which means these second messengers has got many functions once it is activated. So this is the cell membrane phospholipid system. So, when a hormone receptor binds to the receptor, it will cause uh, formation of hormone receptor complex, activation of the GQ subunit. This will cause activation of phospholipase C, which cleaves the PIP2 to IP3 and DAG. When IP3 is activated, it will cause it will bind to the endoplasmic reticulum receptors. So, calcium is released to the cytosol. This increased calcium activates calcium binding proteins like calmodulin. So calmodulin and other calcium binding proteins, calcium will bind to these calcium binding proteins and thus they will activate specific protein kinases which will cause cellular responses. Okay. And what about DAG? DAG will activate protein kinase C and thus this protein kinase A will cause phosphorylation of intracellular proteins and thereby cause cellular response. Another action is it can activate phospholipase A2. See, I said, no, it can uh, cause activation of arachidonic acid. So, this is the pathway for that. DAG can activate phospholipase A2. This phospholipase A2 can convert membrane phospholipids to arachidonic acid. So, what is this big deal about arachidonic acid? Arachidonic acid can be processed into prostaglandins, prostacyclins, thromboxanes and leukotrienes. All are physiologically important molecules. So, this is another action of DAG apart from the activation of protein C. Okay, so in uh, when uh, in cell membrane phospholipid system, we've got an elaborate mechanism. So there are many hormones that utilize this pathway. Example, angiotensin 2, especially on the vascular smooth muscle. The catecholamines, the gonadotropin releasing hormones, the growth hormones, growth hormone releasing hormone, parathyroid hormone, oxytocin, thyrotropin releasing hormone, as well as vasopressin. 
all these hormones act via the cell membrane phospholipid system so thus we have seen about the cell membrane phospholipid system we have seen how it is the phosphatidyl inositol biphosphate is cleaved to ip3 and dag what happens when ip3 is activated what happens when dag is activated right now our last system is calcium calmodulin system so calcium calmodulin system again the hero is calcium we have just mentioned this briefly in the previous system but here we will elaborate on what this calcium calmodulin system is so here when the hormone binds on to the receptor it will cause activation of this um, alpha subunit now this can cause either as i said before it can cause activation of phospholipase c which in turn will cause cleavage of pip2 which in turn produces ip3 and this ip3 can cause uh, release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum by binding on to specific receptors that are present on the endoplasmic reticulum so thus calcium can be released and the method is this uh, activation of hormone receptor can cause opening of channels that are present on the cell membrane specific calcium channels that are present on the cell membrane so thus you can have calcium released into the interior of the cell and then what happens to this calcium it will bind on to calcium binding proteins called calmodulin in fact this this specific calcium binding protein that is calmodulin has got four sites four binding sites for calcium so when three or more molecules of calcium bind on to this calmodulin receptor then you have this calcium calmodulin complex this calcium calmodulin complex can then cause activation of calmodulin dependent kinases which in turn can cause phosphorylation of proteins and thereby cause cellular response so this is how the calcium calmodulin system would work there is an increase in the amount of calcium present in the cell it will bind on to a calcium binding protein will perform a complex with that and thus cause activation of these calmodulin dependent kinases and thereby cause cellular response so this is the calcium calmodulin system so hormone binds to the receptor on the cell membrane there is activation of the g protein opening of, up of ligand gated calcium channels so the calcium enters uh, from the ecf into the cell and uh, it, the calcium is mobilized from the intracellular stores that is endoplasmic reticulum or mitochondria mind you this can occur even via ip3 system also not only by opening up of calcium channels it can also occur by ip3 system so what happens calcium will bind to the intracellular calcium binding proteins like calmodulin there will be activation of calmodulin dependent kinases which cause phosphorylation of intracellular proteins and thus you can have a cellular response so thus we have seen about the calcium calmodulin system also so that completes our second messenger system so we have seen about adrenal cyclase cmp system which is very important from an exam point of view the guanylyl cyclase cgmp system cell membrane phospholipid system and calcium calmodulin system so i hope this video will help you to get a rough idea about these second messenger systems i hope this is useful for you thank you